Hey guys, I am Psychic Mara, missing person of the day, 22-year-old Riley Strain. Riley was in Nashville for a fraternity conference over this past weekend. Unfortunately, he disappeared after being kicked out of a nightclub, more like a bar. Luke's 32 Bridge. Someone kicked him out of that bar. His fraternity friends were still on the inside. No one has heard from Riley. No one has seen him since the day he was kicked out. I wanted to tap into his energy to find out what happened right after he was kicked out of that bar. What happened to Riley Strain? When we hear fraternity brothers and we hear about our sisters, the first thing we think is, man, you know, uh, we have a new family, a new set of friends, brothers and sisters, and we should all have each other's back. And I'm sure Riley thought this, we should all have each other's back. So I'm trying to figure out why in the world was Riley kicked out and no one else, and why in the world was he left stranded by himself? Did anyone, you know, check on him? Did anyone walk him home, back to his room, wherever they were staying? Did anyone drive him to make sure he was safe? Because I'm sure that they saw his condition. They were able to witness what state he was in. And he was pretty much in an overly tipsy state, okay, is what I feel. What went wrong? Right away, I do see him in my vision, and he is like tripping over his own two feet along a sidewalk not far from where he was kicked out from, this bar, this nightclub. Yeah, he's very close to the area. It's like he's tripping over his own two feet. Kind of staggling. Um, he's definitely... I don't want to use this word, I say overly tipsy, but it does look like he's really wasted, almost drunk. I can see him in my vision. I'm going to tell you exactly what I see happen to. Again, this is all allegedly, I don't have any facts, energies are always real. I can see him, I'm waiting. Yeah. Uh, they're getting ready to find him. They need to go ahead and check every pond in the area, any kind of uh, bed of water in the area between the bar that he was kicked out of and where he was staying. There's some type of bed of water. He's somewhere around or in the water. Okay, this is not good. Yeah, it looks like he's getting really hot. He's getting really sick. He's nauseous. Um, he's needing some type of water. I don't see anyone with him. Um, I see people in my vision that had passed him. They're passing him. People are traveling, but they're not paying him much attention. Uh, they're assuming that, oh, he's a drunk or he's like on drugs. So he doesn't, you know, he chose that life. So people, people could be really mean and people don't, they don't have an open mind. So no one thinks, oh, this person needs help. But I can tell you that Riley definitely needed help. He did. Um, man, people just passing him by. Cars, people walking. But there's a point to where I see Riley standing alone. He's so confused. Riley doesn't know what in the world is going on. Yeah, he's feeling at this very moment that, oh my God, they got me. They fooled me. This is what he's thinking at the very end. Like, oh my God, they got me. They fooled me. They brought me out here to like drug me because he feels drugged. Um, Yeah, he was having a good time. Yeah, he was drinking. 
but something was, it looks like slipped into his drink on purpose. Okay. There's that's cowardly behavior. That's cowardly behavior to be sneaky and slip something in someone's drink when they don't know it. Someone put, (sighs) wow, there's more than alcohol in his system. This will come out in the future. Unbelievable. It, it, I feel someone slipped something in his drink without his knowledge. This is what caused such a uproar um, in his, his actions, his temper, his attitude, the way he felt. Uh, like a stimulant or something. I see him in my vision. He can barely stand on his own two feet. Something has happened. It could have been just a a thing to where it's like, we are going to pick a brother to, you know, make look like a fool we are not expecting him to, you know, pass away, but we want to choose him to make him look like a fool. That could be why something was put in his drink. That's what I see. This could be a reason why nobody went with him and they left him to fend for himself in that state of mind and that overly tipsy drunk condition. Because I'm telling you, I see him in my vision by his self trying to hold his own. And he's getting confused because nobody's there. He's confused. So they need to go back and question everyone in that bar. And myself, man, I, I, I would love to know why the bartender or whoever it was, the the guard, the bouncer, I don't know, the security um, asked him to leave. And why would they let him out when they knew that he was having trouble and he could not stand on his own two feet? Why did none of his friends join him, walk him home? Why did none of his friends make sure that he made it home safe? Something is wrong right here with this story. You don't leave nobody out there when they're in that condition. You say, hey, you know, no more drinks, but you sit on the sideline, wait for that to wear off, or you look towards the group of people he came with and you said, hey, your buddy's had too much, take him home. In fact, you all need to leave. Not him, but you all need to leave. It's like, where the hell do you get off kicking this young man out And how come nobody went with him? It makes no sense. It's like a setup in some way. They wanted him to look like a fool. And, you know, Riley didn't understand it at first, but he figured it out when he was having those last moments by himself. Okay. He traveled alone. He he was, he walked into the unknown and I feel like it's water. There's something about a bed of water, a pond, a lake. Um, I just feel like he was getting sick. He was getting hot. He needed water and uh, he, it looks like an accident as far as him like falling off, falling down, hurting himself. I can barely talk. It really bothers me. I apologize. It's bothering me. Ugh. Having an accident, falling down, uh, falling into a pond or a bed of water, there's some type of accident that happened. Um, but it was due to him being, you know, wasted, drunk. Um, and also I see that someone did slip something, more than a little something, into his drink. And it got him like extra, extra, you know, tipsy. 
it, it was like, I don't know. It's really weird. I don't know why I'm getting stimulant, which is something. I mean, it's a liquid substance. It was put into his drink. And they wanted to see his reaction, like make a fool of me. We are going to pick Riley to make a fool of. Um, A tall, big guy like that would never fall hard. He won't fall down. We're going to use him. This makes me think of, uh, I don't know if you all remember, uh, Randy Leach. Randy Leach has been missing since 1988. And I did a reading on him and I picked up um, something just a little similar, just a little bit, just a little. But I'm thinking of Randy Leach when I think of (sighs) Riley Strain. Because Riley did not deserve this. And he was with people that he trusted. He felt had his back. And they were in a group. So we come together. We leave together. If one of our brothers or sisters are down or they're getting kicked out, the hell with that. We're all going to get kicked out. No designated driver, nothing. But the interesting thing is I don't see, I see him walking. See, I don't, I I haven't tapped that deep into it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was he driving? I see in my vision, he's literally tripping over his own two feet, but he's in that area. Uh, Riley Strain could be found somewhere in the area between the bar he was at and where he was staying. There's something about water, a pond or something. If he's not in the water, he's somewhere around water. I can assure you that. Okay, he's waiting to be found. Um, This should not have happened. Uh, You know, I know investigators can't just make stuff up and assume things and we don't want to do that. But I'm telling you, uh, his friends need to be questioned. And so does the bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. He should not have been left alone to fend for himself. You know, if it was to our other people with him and and they all were together, uh, that would be a little bit better. We would feel better about that, right? Um, You don't leave your friend that you know has had too much to drink uh, out there by his or herself. That's not acceptable. I would love to go and confront these people in that bar. Oh man, I, I would get kicked out. I might get arrested. I don't know. I would love to go, man, who the hell do you think you are? Because this could have been prevented. You could have let him sit on the side. I don't care how drunk, hostile, whatever. You should have told his friends that they all have to leave and make sure you get him home safe. What the hell? Some of this stuff could be prevented. Unnecessary. And he's alone? Where the hell are his fraternity brothers? What the hell is going on? Is this hazing or what? Unbelievable. Senseless. Life's being lost and taken over dumb stuff. I get it. Yeah, he had too much to drink. Big deal. It's life. Does that mean he deserves to wander off and be tipsy and fall over by himself and and lose his life? Absolutely not. He was with a group of friends. Get the goddamn cameras into that bar and zoom in on what the hell's going on. Somebody put something in his drink. Go back and talk to the friends. What happened? What happened? And why Why didn't anyone go with him? Hmm? That doesn't sound right. I see him. I see him in my vision. He's by himself, you guys. He's having trouble walking, standing. But he's moving, and I just see him having an accident. He's he's falling over. Uh, he is in, a, I don't know, a lake, a pond, or he's around one. 
missing person of the day, Riley, Riley Strain. Um, justice is coming soon as far as him being recovered, found. Okay. Uh, as far as what happened in that bar, what really happened, there's more questions that will, uh, be raised and there will be answers that need answers.